Good morning. Uh, if you would open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 14. Uh, Pastor Denham was walking all over my spot this morning. And uh, that's how the Holy Spirit works. Uh, so you may hear some of the same words, but in a, from a different perspective, because he was out of Luke and I'm out of Mark. Uh, same, same spot, though. Go figure. All right, chapter 14 of Mark. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Secretly kill Jesus because they couldn't do it publicly because the people um, respected Jesus. They did not, but the people did. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. In verse 3, and being in Bethany, the house of Simon the leper, he sat at meat. So obviously Simon was no longer a leper. How come? Because Jesus touched him. How in the world would you touch a leper? That's a death sentence. What are you doing? And now he's sitting in the house with him eating. And as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. A precious ointment smelled amazing. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. They said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 days labor, 300 pence, and been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Now, of course, Judas Iscariot was a thief, so he was murmuring because he, that's less money that he had control over. You had the others mumbling and murmuring. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, knowing their heart. Verse 6, and Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. She hath done what she could, and she has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Um, some stories uh, that have been written later years about the alabaster box and about the, you know, she, every time that she had laid with a man, she laid up uh, that day's labor into a, a fund and finally purchased, you know, this this amount of ointment but once she had met Jesus her saving up for this made no sense other than that God had already pre-prepared her heart to prepare for Jesus for his burial that was upcoming and when she wept and washed her, washed her with Jesus with her hair and kept crying and people accused her of different things and don't you know what kind of woman that is that's touching you and she said she has loved much, and she has much to be forgiven of. Um, but she realized how much Jesus had done for her in that moment when he forgave her sin, and you know, she was saved, and she's part of the kingdom. And Mary is one of the ones standing along with uh, Jesus' mother and John as Jesus' uh, life goes from him. He gives up his life on the cross. Um, so verse 80 says, she says, she had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wherever, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Wow. And then you have to always contrast such good things with bad and so verse 10 and judas iscariot one of the 12 went into the chief priest to betray him unto them immediately he was just done he was he said that's it i can't believe he took that and let her do that i'm i'm going to turn him in um, and when they heard it they were glad of course and promised to give him money and sought how he might conveniently betray him and yes judas was actively seeking the time when he could betray Jesus, not knowing that he was betraying Jesus to death, just that he was betraying him, and he was getting money. 
Verse 12, in the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? This is a lot of work that would have to happen. They'd have to cook the lamb. They'd have to, uh, you know, cut the lamb, have to prepare the, um, the, the um, uh, horseradish mix. They'd have to, uh, the, the condiments, the sides, you know, all the things that, that you'd have during Passover. It's not like you could go to, uh, you know, uh, Schleppies on the corner and pick it up and, and take it home as a pickup order. Uh, you had to do all this yourself, and they had to have a place to prepare it, to cook it, to to have the feast, a place to have a recl uh, triclinium or some place that they could all lay together and, and eat together. Verse thirteen, and he sendeth uh, forth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city. And there you shall meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. So what are the chances of someone going into a city and seeing someone carrying water? Well, pretty good, right? But no, this is the first man you see carrying water. You're going to follow him. How would Jesus know this? He's God. He knows. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the goodman of the house, the master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. And his disciples went forth, came into the city, and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. As the sun set, it was time for the Passover. And they would be in position as the sun set. And it would be the next day, the Passover day, and they'd eat the feast. He said, and as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and he said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. Okay, they're all dipping in the dish. <laughs> He's not giving anything away yet. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good word for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and brake it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took of the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Does that include Judas Iscariot? Yeah, yes, it did. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, which is what wine was that they drank, okay, until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So Wednesday night, they... That's why we have Wednesday night services, some say, a uh, Bible study. And it's a good night to have your uh, Lord's Supper celebration. Verse 26, And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. They still didn't understand what he was saying. They don't, they don't get it. They don't... And of course, Peter said, although I all shall be offended, yet will not I, I won't be, ever be offended, no. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Now, interesting, because this is a little different from the other perspective. One says just till the cock crows, right? You'll deny me thrice. This one says cock crow twice. And thrice so what is it oh, we shall never know but it's uh different perspectives this is why it's so keen that you have four different eyewitness uh accounts of course mark and luke compiled their accounts from eyewitnesses and so they came up with this as the best postulate for both of what actually occurred and uh, any FBI person will tell you that, or any investigator will tell you that, that every eyewitness you talk to, some will say the car is red, some will say it's blue. Some, you look for commonalities between them. If all of them have the same story, it's suspect. Somebody paid somebody to say something, and all the same. 
Um, eyewitness stories are always going to, people are going to see different things. And that's why um, they're called the synoptic go uh, gospels. Sin is with, and then optic, of course, eye. So with one eye, they saw what was happening. They were eyewitnesses of the truth of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and his resurrection. So verse 31, it says, But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said all of them, all they, they all. And they came to a place which is named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and very heavy. Now they'd just eaten a huge meal. Okay, they've had the festivities. It's getting late uh, in the evening, you know, probably about uh, 10, 11 o'clock, something like that. And, you know, you've got your full belly. You worked all day preparing the feast. Can't blame them, but at the same time, he taketh with him Peter and James and John, the inner circle, and began to be sore amazed and very heavy. And he saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful to, unto death. Tarry ye here. And watch, as watch and wait. And he went forward a little bit, and he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible that the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. And he cometh, and he findeth them sleeping, and said unto Peter, Simon, Sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour? You couldn't keep your eyes open one hour. Watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. They had no idea what to say. And he cometh a third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Doesn't let him sleep very long, does he? Let us go. He that betrayeth me is at hand. He's here. And immediately while he yet spake cometh Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. Otherwise they couldn't tell which one of these guys was Jesus. Jesus could just blend in. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and say, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Of course, we know that Jesus admonishes him and says, Peter, put your sword away. And he that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. He picks up the ear of Malchus that's, uh, and puts, attaches it to the man's head and it's healed. Does that stop these guys from doing what they're going to do? No. In verse 48, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching. You took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. You can't just blame Peter. They all ran off. And there, now Mark is speaking of himself. And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid a hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. First biblical streaker, but uh, Mark here is, is saying that I was there, I was at the point, I, I witnessed this as well. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and scribes. Now not everybody... This was an illegal Sanhedrin meeting, um, a kangaroo court uh, at night, so they could avoid anyone that they didn't want to attend. And Peter followed him afar off, verse 54, even into the palace of the high priest. 
And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. They couldn't pull together an a ironclad case against Jesus. There arose certainly bear false witness, saying, We heard him say that I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Remember, the sheep was going to be silent with the shearers. <laughs> and what is it which these witnesses witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, and directly, and said unto him, Art thou the Christ? Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And the way he answered that, saying, I am, he was saying that he is God. He says, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitteth on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And of course, that was it. Pandemonium breaks out. The high priest rent his clothes and said, What need have we of any further witnesses? You've heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. However, they could not kill him. Uh, that power was not given to them, it was given to the Romans, so therefore they had to turn him over to the Romans. And some began to spit on him, cover his face, punch him, buffet him. And to say unto him, prophesy, who, who hit you, who hit you? And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, so you imagine they're on top in an area where they're having this kangaroo court. Underneath is the palace part. And there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and thou also was with, with Jesus of Nazareth. You, you were one of those, weren't you? But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what, you're, what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and he heard the cock crow. The maid saw him again, must be a different maid, and began to say to them that stood by, this, this is one of them. And he denied it again, and after... A little after it, and they stood by, said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereunto. In other words, your, your, your language, your, 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 your slang, your, the way that you uh, form your words betray that you are a Galilean as well. But he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. The third time here, and the second time, the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word of Jesus. And said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereupon, he wept and went away. It's pretty hard when you feel like you know you're 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 the king, you're the boss, you're the you're the leader, you're the chosen one, you're the you're the chip off the old block, the you know, a rock, Peter, the leader, and but now he's denied Jesus three times, something he said he would never do. And he abandons Jesus to his fate. And we don't hear of Peter until later, after Jesus has arisen, you know, and is showing himself. Uh, must have been pretty hard on Peter. We know that Jesus forgave him, you know. Uh, Peter did what Peter does. He goes out and goes fishing. And looks over. And somebody's got a fire. And cooking fish. And he realizes it's Jesus. He jumps in the water. Swims over to him. And Jesus says, do you love these fish more than you love me? No, I love you, Jesus. Do you love me more than these fish? I love you, Jesus. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Second time. Third time. He's getting frustrated with Jesus. Feed my sheep. <laughs> Forgave him. Um, I'm glad that Jesus forgives us of our sins. I'm glad that we have someone that we can go to when we fail miserably. When we're not Christian-like, when we do things that we know we should, God is there to pick us up. If you'll repent, turn away from it. Okay? Let God show you the right path. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ to be your Savior, let this day be that day that you ask him into your heart. That you ask him to forgive you your sin. You ask him to be the Lord over your life. 
He will come in, he will, suck, he will seal you into the day of redemption. And you need to get with a good Bible teaching church, that Bible preaching church that will help to grow you spiritually. Uh, you'll be baptized and so that you can grow as Jesus commanded us to. And uh, then things will go well with you. And you teach others the same thing. Don't deny Jesus. You might just hear a rooster cry. And maybe it'll remind you. We need Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. We thank you that you love us with your everything that you have, that you died for us. Lord, strengthen our hearts, strengthen our minds, strengthen our willpower that we might uh, love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbors as ourselves. We can't love others if we don't love Jesus. We can't love ourselves if we don't love Jesus. Help us, Lord, to love and to love. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.